I'd like to say hello to everyone. Welcome to Restoration Christian Fellowship Church Bible Study. I bring you greetings on behalf of our senior pastor, Imogene Ingram, and the Restoration Christian Fellowship Church family. We thank you for joining our broadcast on tonight. Uh, tonight, we continue on our study in Ephesians chapter uh, 5, verse 9. Uh, we've been studying about the truth. Uh, we're going to continue that, that uh, teaching on tonight. Uh, I believe we on page, uh, let me bring it up real quick to tell you exactly where we are. Uh, we are, are are on point three. The truth sets man free from the bondage of death. On my sheet is page seventeen. Uh, point three on page seventeen. Uh, the truth sets man free from the bondage of death. Uh, the last few weeks, we have been covering the, the truth. We have been talking about the moral truth, saving truth, working truth, and living truth. Um, we all found out that it is not simply something to to be known. It is something to be done, amen. It is the knowledge and experience of true reality as exposed to false reality. Uh, it is the truth in the inward parts, amen. Uh, we also uh, talked about how God's word uh, um, is said to be the truth. We found that out in John 17 and 17. Um, and Jesus Christ himself claimed to be the truth. And that's John 14 and 6, which says, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, two distinguishing uh, between the two. God's word is sometimes said to be the written truth or the word. And Jesus Christ is sometimes said to be the living truth or the word. Amen. Then we also covered uh, the truth sets men free from the shadow of doubt and despair. A man no longer has to grasp and grope about to know the truth, whether it be the truth of God or um, or of his own word, a our world, own world, amen. And then uh, last part we covered last week was the truth sets man free from the bondages of sin. A uh, man no longer has to grasp after the power to overcome, nor does he have to struggle against the weight of the guilt, uh, the search for deliverance, amen, and or the power to conquer, to overcome, to attain, and to live is now um, and to live is now over. It's all found in our Savior, Jesus Christ. And tonight, as stated, we're going to pick up with the truth sets man free from the bondage of death. Um, we're going to ask uh, uh, for you guys to bow your heads with us in prayer as we open up this morning, this afternoon. Thank you, Lord. Uh, God, we come before you. Uh, we just thank you for your gracious grace that you're blessed upon us this day. We thank you for your uh, love care and compassion for us, oh God. We thank you for forgiving us and placing us in right standing with our Father God. God, we thank you, oh God, um, for just uh, forgiving anything we have done or did or said outside of your will. We thank you for, for forgiving us and placing us in right standing with our Father God. God, we welcome you in this class on tonight, oh God. God, we pray, oh God, that something will be said to bless each and every one of us, to strengthen our hearts, to strengthen, oh God, our knowledge in you, and just, just to strengthen us as we continue to walk with you, oh God. God, we thank you, O oh God, for your word, O oh God, is truth. And that's what we're studying, O oh God. We're not following some false God, some God that does not exist, but we are following the true and the living God. And we thank you, O oh God, for who you are, O oh God. And we thank you for sending your precious son, Jesus. And we thank you for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. God, we ask you, as we pray for our church, that we continue to pray for Restoration Christian Fellowship Church. We thank you for our, um, our founder, uh, one of the founders, our senior pastor, Medine Ingram. We continue to pray for her strength, her wisdom, her knowledge, her guidance. We just thank you, O oh God, for perfecting everything that concerns her, O oh God. And God, we just thank you for the vision you have in her heart, O oh God, for restoration. And we thank you, O oh God, that she will uh, begin to uh, see it materialize right before her eyes, O oh God. So we thank you for her and we thank you for the numbers of restoration, oh God, those that have wrapped their arms around the vision of restoration that are sincere in their hearts about uh, what um, you would like to do. Oh God, at restoration, oh God, we thank you for them. We, we pray for all of our healths, oh God, all of our, our wives, our children, grandchildren, oh God, uh, our family and friends as well. We pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, we just thank you, oh God. Uh, for us, oh God, being sold out to the vision, oh God. Our pastor has given us the word for the year, oh God, a, a year of worship, oh God. So God, I ask you to just place in all of our hearts a spirit of worship, oh God. Uh, when we uh, have opportunity, oh God, let us just get into your presence, oh God, like never before, oh God. Let us not be ashamed, oh God, to, to, to just get lost in your spirit, oh God. 
the spirit of worship, oh God. We ask that it be in all of us, oh God, as we um, grow in your wisdom and knowledge of who you are, God. So God, we thank you for restoration. Oh God, we pray once again for the elders, the, the leaders, the uh, ministers, oh God, the ushers, the greeters, everyone in their rightful position, we pray for them, oh God. And once again, we pray for restoration of friends that are on the uh, call, um, may be on and may not be on on tonight. We pray for them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Anything that concerns them, we ask you to correct it and fix it for them, oh God. Now we pray for the, those on our prayer list, oh God, especially our deacon Frank uh, Tall, oh God. We pray for him and his family. God, we pray for their uh, um, uh, peace and comfort right now, oh God. Um, we pray for um, their brother, oh God, that are uh, going through a little health issues there. We pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ, James Tall. We pray, oh God, that you uh, perform a miracle, God. And we just ask you to go right now, oh God, into those hospital rooms, oh God, and just uh, make a change, oh God. Do something marvelous, oh God. Do something great in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your will be done in that situation. And we pray for the family, oh God, give them comfort and give them peace, oh God. And we pray for all of those that um, are sick and um, also that are caregivers for their family members. We lift them up to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you to give them peace and strength, oh God, um, and endurance, oh God, to continue on, oh God, to not give up on their family members, oh God, oh God. And we know, oh God, that caregiving is not an easy task, oh God. So we lift up all those, oh God, that um, that are caregivers, oh God, whether it's for families or in working in the um, healthcare profession, or whatever it may be, oh God, we pray for them and we lift them up to you in the name of Jesus Christ. God, any um, th note that we know that are struggling with drugs, alcohol, oh God, um, uh, um, abusive situations, oh God, health problems, oh God, we lift them up to you on tonight, oh God, uh, gluttony, oh God, cancer, diabetes, oh God, thyroid problems, oh God, we lift them up to you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we pray that your healing virtue will just flow through these airways, oh God, and touch all those that are in need of uh, healing on tonight, oh God, and God, as we pray for our nation, we just pray uh, for the, against the disunity that's trying to prevail. We pray for unity, oh God, amongst the churches, oh God. And, and we just pray, oh God, for the churches, oh God, that we will come together and work together, oh God, to bring about change in our communities and not just our communities, but our, our nations and cities as well, oh God, because we will lift up the name of Jesus Christ. So God, once again, we thank you for this class. We ask you to bless those that are um, viewing live, uh, those that will do this in the future. Oh, God, I decrease that you may increase, word my mouth, and word those um, that will give input on tonight as well. Let this class be a blessing to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, once again, we thank um, everyone for joining. Um, tonight, I um, would like to start in uh, two ways. Um, the first way, uh, Deacon Kevin showed a, a video uh, with me, and I, I told him that I might share it today. And I, in prayer yesterday and this, today, with my confirmation, there's two videos that I'm going to share. It's about a minute uh, each one. Um, but I think you're going to um, get the drift of why I started this way, because we're talking about the truth. Um, once again, we're going to start on page uh, 17 in your packet. And point three, amen, we're going to be talking about the truth sets man free from the bondage of death. Amen. But I'm going to start off uh, reading... Um, uh, 2 Timothy uh, 1 through uh, 6 on tonight. I just felt led to start this way as we're talking about the truth. Um, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I'm reading 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting at verse uh, 1 through 6 on tonight. And it starts this way. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. Uh, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. Uh, they will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends and be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are uh, burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. Such women are forever following new teachings, but they are never able 
to come um, ne never able to understand the truth. And that last two verses, six and seven, of course, uh, Paul was instructing Timothy about the women that was being pulled astray by Paul's teachers at that time. But how many know that men can be pulled away as well in the times we live in today? So that word is not just for women, those last two verses, therefore, the times we're living in today, because both men and women are being deceived and um, being uh, taken, amen, um, um, uh, out of what God has for us. Amen. So we must be careful. Amen. And I wanted to start that way because we're talking about the truth and we see all the different things that are going on in our world today. But I uh, want to share these two videos with you and then we're going to go ahead and get started on tonight. Uh, let me just bring up my screen to share this. Um, it's going to be two videos and, I, and you'll understand why I'm going this way on tonight. And let me know if you can hear this. When I started, uh, can everyone see that, my screen? Yes, I can see it. I don't hear it. You hear it? No. No, I don't hear it, but I see it. Likewise. Amen. I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, I was getting a uh, feedback. You um, said you couldn't hear it. Okay. No. I'm just going to stop. Then. Um, I'm not sure if in any of you see the words that were going on. The caption. Uh, don't worry about it. Let me just stop. I have to figure that out next time um, to be able to share that video with you. That video was uh, talking about the church. And how the enemy, amen, has come into the churches and the churches are not preaching the truth. Um, so many uh, videos I've watched the last two weeks um, have been talking about the church and the responsibilities of pastors and leaders, amen, um, that it is our responsibility to teach the truth and preach the truth and not only preach and teach it, amen, but we are to live the truth, amen, and be the truth amongst our, um, our parishioners, amen, because uh, you guys are following us, amen. If we're doing anything that is contrary to what the Bible is telling us to do, man, we we have to be careful, amen, because God does not want us to live according to the world. He wants us to live according, amen, to the Bible. And as we found out the last few weeks, the Bible is, is the truth, amen, and that truth is in our Savior Jesus Christ, where the Word had become flesh, which we learned last week in our Savior Jesus Christ. And He wants us to live for Jesus, amen. It's not for um, homes, it's not for cars, it's not uh, for members, um, but it's for winning souls to the kingdom of God. Amen. And the church has gotten so far away from, amen, the things of God. Um, the other video that I was going to show you was from C.C. Winans, and she was saying how if you saw anything in me, amen, that did not, amen, resemble God and the word of God, you have permission, amen, to check me, amen. Because I don't want to um, be a false um, leader, amen. Um, if it's not, um, uh, it does not line up with the word of God, you have permission, amen, to come and check me, amen. Because in that checking me, amen, as iron sharpeneth iron, it will make me, amen, would like to get on the right track to make sure that I'm preaching and teaching the right word to you. And it lined right up to, like as I stated, stated what we've been teaching about, um, these last few weeks about the truth, amen, how uh, uh, God, amen, and his word is truth, amen, and his savior, amen, is the word come to life for us, amen, and we cannot, amen, let the world dictate to us, amen, how we should operate. Um, the video that I showed that didn't come out clearly, and the second one was actually instructing us, amen, and encouraging us, amen, to be the, be the word of God for real, amen, and not fake. Amen. It's very, very important that we honor God, amen, not just on Sundays, but every day of our lives, not just for those in leadership, but actually the lay people as well. Anyone that claims to be a Christian and a believer, it's very, very important that we, amen, be the lights in the world. And that's what we've been talking about the last few weeks, amen, 
that letting our light shine through us. Pastor told us, amen, let your light shine, amen. And if we let our light shine, amen, that would be the fruit of the spirit will be on display coming out of us. People's lives will be changed. Our lives will be changed. Amen. A world would be a much better place. Our homes would, would be a much better place. And we wouldn't have all the false teachings that we have today because we have uh, stayed in line, amen, with the word of God. Um, I saw a couple of messages this Sunday that was talking about alignment, amen, and, and it was referring to how we should be in alignment with God. And, um, and then it took me back to when we walk in a rhythm with God, that's another way that we are in position to, to walk and live the right way because we're walking and talking and being led by our Father, um, Jesus, amen, as he walks with us, talks with us, and lives with us, amen. So once again, uh, before we get into the lesson, very, very important, amen, that we live this truth out. And that truth is that Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. And he is the truth, amen, that God wants the world to, 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 to gravitate to. And once again, John 8, uh, 32 says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, amen. And, and we don't have to go to a club experience at a church, amen, to be free, amen. We can go to a church, amen, that don't, don't have the smoke, don't have the smoke, don't have the flashing lights, amen, don't have the, the, the as they say, the, the, the cell wolfers and the bass and all that, but we have the power of the Holy Spirit moving, amen. How many know the power of the Holy Spirit can rejuvenate and strengthen, can change lives, amen, and can um, put uh, uh, give you, amen, a Holy Ghost high where the next day, amen, you ain't got to worry about, amen, your ears hurting and everything, uh, uh, eyes all messed up from the legs flashing all over the place. God wants to create a holy place, amen. I believe the church is a holy place and we desecrate that holy place when we bring in the things of the world, amen. It's not saying that we can't use sound systems and speakers, amen, and and and, and a better microphones and all those different things. We, as a church, we use technology. We use TV screens, amen. Uh, it helps us put up scriptures. It helps us put up videos. Also, we use Facebook. We use YouTube. Amen. To to uh to get the word out to those in the world. Amen. But we're using technology, amen, to the benefit of, of God, amen. Not to our benefit and not for the likes and not for the monetary gifts. Because if you get a certain amount of people coming to your website, you start to get paid. But how many know that it's a blessing that hundreds of people uh are getting um the word of God? They're getting um encouragement, their lives are being changed. Amen. I think that's a better outcome. Then maybe getting 50 cent for someone clicking on you. I'm not saying money is bad. I'm just saying if you're reaching a soul, I think that is a better outcome. So I'm going to stop right there because um, we just want to live holy and we want to be the people God called us to be. Amen. And we want to um, be free because the truth has set us free in the things of God. Amen. So before I get into the lesson, um, any thoughts um, before we go in there about how you feel about what's going on and the climate of the church today? Um, what the truth uh, means to you and how we can do a better job, baby, and uh, sharing the truth with others. So would anybody like to chime in at this time before we get uh, into the lesson? All right. Uh, I don't see anybody. Okay, we all good? All right, we're on page 17.3. We're still talking about the truth, amen. And point three says, the truth sets man free from the bondage of death. Man no longer has to be subjected to, to the fear of death. By his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ has now conquered death. Amen. And in his death and resurrection, man now has, excuse me, the most glorious of hopes. He can now live eternally. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. And Hebrews uh, 2, 14 and 15 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and to deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Amen. So we see here, um, God has set us free from the bondage of death. Uh, we no longer have to be afraid of death. Amen. Because Jesus Christ is the first fruits, amen, of the resurrection. He was the, the first one. To, um, to come back to life, that God brought back to life to, to let his believers and followers know 
that um, if he did it for Jesus Christ, he would do it for all his followers, which we're going to read in the scriptures today. But he was that first one that was resurrected. Amen. The enemy was shouting on that um, uh, the days that they put him in the grave. Amen. They thought he would. They buried him. They thought they killed the, uh, the Messiah. They thought that um, uh, they were celebrating and 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 just having a ha happy time. But they forgot that Jesus said on the third day. Amen. That I was going to rise. Amen. And on that third day, he did rise and he did come back to life. And once again, he is considered the first fruit, amen, of the resurrection. And it's going to be that first fruit for resurrection for all of us that believe. Amen. So death, amen, no longer has control over us. The enemy always had that in his pocket, as per se, that um that that you're going to die. Amen. And you're going to uh, there is no afterlife. Amen. But Jesus Christ, Christ proved that wrong on that third day when he rose. And now he's seated at the right hand of our Father God. And now we as believers, the truth has set us free where we do not have to let bondage and um, fear of death be over, over us, amen, or control us. Um, John 5, 24 through 29 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father have life in himself, so hath he given this to the Son to have life in himself, and have given him authority to execute judgment. Also, because he is the Son of Man, marvel not at this. For the hour is coming, in the which all that are that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. John 5, 24 through 29. Romans 8 and 2 says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. The law of the spirit of life. The life is in our Savior, Jesus Christ, has made us free from the law of sin and death. And lastly, once again, Hebrews 2, 14 through 15. For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So we are freed from bondage, amen, and that bondage of death does not have control of us no more. Uh, that, that chain has been broken uh, through our Savior being, um, being crucified, buried, and resurrected, and that same Spirit that raised our Savior, Jesus Christ, will raise us as well. So we do not have to fear death, and I think um, when you hear people talk, especially believers that understand the fact that um, when we leave this earth, when we close our eyes, our eyes will wake up, wake up, we will wake up and we will be in glory. It will be worth it all. It will be worth it all because we will be seeing our Savior to live out eternity. So that bondage of death has been broken and it has been broken because of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So the truth is, amen, that truth has set us free, amen, from the bondage of death. Amen. So uh, are any thoughts on being freed from the bondage of death uh, before we move on to the next point? I was just thinking about how many times I've heard stories of people that weren't saved and how horrible death was for them versus people that are born again. And they'll tell you, you know, even Joe even said overseer, I'm not afraid to die. You know, he was at peace about yeah. leaving, you know, because he knew where he was going because he, he made it clear to us to live as Christ yes. and to die as gain. <laughs> so yes, he did. He really yes. let us know that. So that was no fear of death. But when the person is unsaved, you know, a lot of times they fear death and they fight death, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I, that book just came to me. Yes, that was a very good point, uh, Mom, and, I, and he drove that point home, amen, sure that, you know, and he made sure that we all knew that, and um, and that's how, once again, as you said, for a person that is saved, 
it, it's a better situation to be in and facing death right. than that person that is not saved. And as you were saying that, Mom, I was thinking about even the family. Um, those family members that are saved may know that their loved one isn't saved. Amen. It, it's, it's probably going to be hard on them as well because they know, right. amen, that their, their family member may not be making it into heaven. Amen. Right. To live out eternity. So it's very, very important um, that we understand that we are that 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 bondage of death has been broken off of us. And we could be at peace with dying because we will wake up in glory. Uh, anyone else before we move on to the next point? Yes, Deacon Kevin. Uh, yes, I wanted to say also with the truth, um, and I was thinking about what uh Pastor was saying, and I also had me thinking about knowing the word for yourself so that you're not misled. Um, because we know there are those that teach um, that mankind will not go to hell. Um, and then there are those that teach, um, if you do go to hell, you won't be there uh, long because God um, doesn't punish you forever. And then, um, you know, those that, uh, that preach that whatever your conscience tells you, you know, God accepts you as you are, but they're not uh, um, preaching the full and correct word of God. It seems as if the antichrist is, is definitely here because there seems to be a lot of leaders, um, prominent leaders that are teaching um, across, basically across the Bible and their own interpretation of it. And there's, there's a lot of people that's willing uh, to accept it. And it had me thinking of 2 Timothy 4, Verses three and four, which says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, yes. and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Um, and it's, yes. it's, it's a shame, but it is what's happening right now. And if you don't know the word of God for yourself, uh, you're just likely to to listen to anybody that's willing to tell you something um, that eases your own uh, flesh, eases your own conscience. And and I just, you know, I just found out another prominent, I won't mention no names, but I just found out another prominent leader, singer, gospel singer. Um, you know, while we were having New Year's um, Eve service, I'm looking at this service and it was like, it was in the club. It was lights. It was the booming. It was, it was everything that you would think that you was in a club, except that they were in a church. And the response was, you know, we just bring it in everybody. Uh, but there is no sin. You know, there's, you're not really performing any sin. It's just come as you are and continue to live as you are, not separate yourself from the darkness and coming into the light, but still allowing you to be in the darkness and then continue to live. So it's just a shame to hear, as we're talking about the truth, um, we, we're hearing a bunch of lies, and but it's easily accepted today. Mm -hmm. um, because it feels, I guess it just feels good to accept anybody and what they're saying, whether it's about abortion uh, that we've heard before or whatever the sin may be is easily acceptable today, you know, to change the word of God, it seems like. Yeah. And that's why much prayer is needed because there is a lot of, uh, as they say, false teachers. And, you know, um, uh, I, I, I know we don't want to get in, go down that road uh, of talking about um, these churches. I think our job is to pray for them. Um, uh, my heart was grieved because, um, when people try to justify uh, what the means that they are trying to do, that's when I lose respect for them. You cannot justify bringing the world into the church. As a man and woman of God and a leader within a church, there's no way you can justify bringing in means from the world um, uh, to say that, you know, um, I've been led by God to do something like that. I, I truly don't believe God would do that. And then one pastor actually, you know, said, you know, I'm, I'm a soul winner and I won souls. And someone actually checked them on that and um, brought up the video of the of that service. And they claimed that hundreds of souls came to the Lord and they showed way before five coming up 
um, to, for salvation. Um, and, and now video don't lie. So now people can actually check you when you try to justify your wrong. And I don't think it's them trying to check you. I think God is checking you, letting you know that you were wrong. Amen. So we much prayer is needed for the body of Christ. Amen. And, you know, as we grow in the Lord, amen, uh, let us not get away from the foundation. And that's something that Paul was instructing Timothy, amen, um, and instructed um, others, amen, as you grow, amen, don't leave the foundation of what you was taught, amen. And that's something that I love for, um, that I've been instructed from our overseer and our pastor in the true way of doing a thing godly, amen, where we're not in falsehoods, we're not out here, amen, trying to um, uh, uh, win people uh, just for the sake of winning people, amen, but we're trying to change lives, we're trying to uh, do what God called us to do as a church, to bring restoration to those that are hurting, those that are lost, those that need Jesus Christ, it's not about packing out a church, amen, and that's what happens, if you can pack out a church um, and, and some of those events that went down, um, because that wasn't the only church that it happened, it, it just happened that that particular one um, decided to put it up on video, but it was a lot more that was happening. Uh, let me uh, be quiet there. Uh, yes, Pastor. Yes, uh, just to add to what Dick and uh, Kevin was talking about in Timothy, that third chapter in the 13th verse, it says that, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, mm -hmm. deceiving and being deceived. Yes. So there's a spirit of seduction mm -hmm. that's rampant over the world. Yeah. That spirit of deception and yes, yeah, sed seduction and deception. It's just mm -hmm. it's going to get worse and worse. Yes. So that's what's happening with these, you know, different leaders that are involving themselves in such types, you know, of services to bring the world into the church like that. It's yes. a spirit of seduction. Yes, it is. Yes, and I, I and Pastor, just to continue on with you was because I was going to pick up on that as you continue to read in um, Timothy three, um, starting fourteen, fourteen through sixteen to continue. It says, "But continue thou, as I was stating, in the things which thou hast learned and has right. been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known." There it is. Holy the scriptures, scripture. which yes. are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, amen, which is in our in Christ Jesus Christ. And Deacon Kevin, this goes to you. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, amen, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness, amen, that the man, there it is, that the man or woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished. Mm -hmm unto all good works. Amen. I love that. That the man of God may be perfect. Not only perfect, but thoroughly. That means complete. Amen. <laughs> Furnished unto all good works. Amen. So we're not called to do this all wacky, crazy stuff. Amen. But we're called to do good works. Amen. And as we're reading and studying this, amen. And when mom, when pastor brought up, yeah, mom brought up, amen, about dad and overseer, I reminded, I've always been reminded, and I was thinking about this when I first saw some of the stuff that happened and is happening, um, where he would say, you know, we're not going to be a church of entertainment, amen, where we're not going to let the world of entertainment come and be part of our church, amen, and now, years later, what do you see where the church has become a place of entertainment, amen, and not stand true to the things and word of God. And that's why I love the foundation that I've had and you all have as well, that we have been taught the word of God and that we're taught not to um, misuse that word of God, but to be true people walking in holiness. Amen. That's what Pastor was talking about a few weeks ago. We all are work in progress. Amen. And God is sanctifying us. God is making us righteous. God is making us whole. Amen. And we're not to continue. Amen. Walking down that road of the world. Amen. Um, we we'll begin to think of. If, if the church resembles the world, when people come into the church for that first time or come into the need help and the church is acting and resembling what the world is, how many people are really truly going to be delivered or they might walk out or leave, which I'm finding out where people have been going to some churches and they're disillusioned with where I can get help and didn't get the help. And now they're back out in the world. Mm -hmm. 
So the truth is needed, amen, in our world today. And we as believers must stand up for righteousness and not be part of all the shenanigans that are going on today. Amen. And I love, once again, our foundation here at Restoration. Uh, yes, Deacon Kevin. Yeah, I just want to respond real quick. Um, as uh, as we were going, I, as I went back, and I'm thinking about when we were being taught on the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone, is the reason why you cannot remove the chief cornerstone from the building. You might replace other stones, but you can't replace that one. And when you replace it with yourself, that's when it starts to crumble. And the more as the days go forward, it, it's funny how I hear overseers, deep baritone voice, even the more. As the days uh, uh, go forward, I just hear his voice more and more with the uh, discussions, the sermons, the preaching yes. uh, that we had. You just hear his voice more and more. And uh, the last thing I want to say about that situation, about that night, when you have a sinner that rebukes you, when a sinner rebukes the pastor, yes. that was amazing. When a sinner just said he felt uncomfortable with the whole vibe, with the whole atmosphere. Yes. That was amazing to me. When a sinner sees the light and acknowledges that something wasn't right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, once again, we supposed to be letting the light shine. And that unbeliever goes in and, and sees the world and was like, you know, this ain't what it's supposed to be. I'm, I'm comfortable. Amen. So much prayer is needed. And um, as we continue to pray uh, for our nation, our world, we pray for our leaders as well as we all do. But we, we, we need to pray. Amen. That we don't let the world come in and take over the churches. Amen. Um, this is sacred ground. And, and because you know, the enemy has got that little bit of foothold. That's why we have uh, um, homes broken, communities broken, our nation broken, our uh, country broken, and the world broken, amen, because we're allowing the world to dictate to us, amen, how we're supposed to live and be when we're supposed to be dictating to the world how God wants the world to be, amen. So this light that we're talking about is needed and necessary. So if there is no more comments. I'm going to move on to point four. Uh, point four is the truth sets man free from the bondage of judgment and hell. Uh, the darkness of an unknown future and apprehension of an impending judgment constantly faces man. At best, man can only hope for annihilation, and his and he shudders at the thought. At worst, he can expect torture by the gods that be, and he trembles at the possibility. But but Jesus Christ has revealed the truth. He himself bore the judgment and punishment of the judgment for all men. Amen. The truth sets man free from the bondage of judgment in hell. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Uh, Romans 5, 6 and 8. Uh, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. But God commendeth, commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, glory to God, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved. Amen. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. Amen. And uh, 1 Peter 2, 24. Who is, who his own self uh, bear our sins in his own body on the tree? that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Amen. There it is. Amen. That that we being dead to sins, amen, should, amen, live unto righteousness. Amen. 1 Peter 2, 24. And the last scripture there, 1 Peter 3, 18. For God also have once suff suffered for sins, the just for, for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, 1 Peter 3, 18. So this, this uh, uh, point here, point four, we have been set free from the bondage of judgment and hell. Amen. So we don't have to be uh, worried and stressed about uh, hell. We have been delivered because Christ has took the sin 
uh, on for us, took the punishment on for us, has redeemed us from this, uh, um, from, amen, um, going through the judgment of hell, amen, and now, amen, we can live free, amen, knowing, amen, that our Christ, amen, he came, amen, to give us everlasting life, amen, he came uh, for those who believe, amen, in him, amen, will not have to go to that place called hell, and let the world think that there is no hell, and let them teach that there is no hell, amen, but there is literally a hell, and it will be a place of separation in the last days, amen, uh, uh, and we must um, be encouraged to know as believers, amen, that we are going to be in a better place, that place is heaven, but if we do not accept Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, amen, that we will be um, eternally separated from our Savior to live out um, uh, in eternity in hell. And don't let the world tell you that there is no hell because preachers and pastors and ministers around the world all over uh, social media is saying that there is no hell. Amen. And there ain't going to be no hell. And everybody's going to make it into heaven. Um, um, I beg to differ because we have learned that um, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except they go through him. Amen. I don't know no other way. So the world can tell you that there are, there is many ways to God. The Bible is, is the truth tells us there is only one way, and that is accepting our Savior Jesus Christ. And there is a hell to um to for those who do not believe and accept. It's a harsh reality. Um, many people do not want to accept that um, reality, but it is a reality, and it is truth that when we leave this earth, Amen. Um, we either going to go to one or the other. There is no in between. There is no walk in the fence. It's either you in heaven or you're going to be in hell. And hell is real. Amen. Uh, any points before we move on to point five? Uh, the truth sets man free from uh, being saved to the uttermost. Amen. Uh, next point, point five. The truth sets man free to be saved to the uttermost. Existence, love, joy, peace, satisfaction, pleasures, hope. Nothing has to be incomplete any longer. No good thing ever again has to be denied. Uh, man, Jesus Christ, the truth, is able to save man to the uttermost, completely, perfectly, finally, and for eternity, as I said. All a all a person has to do is to come, is to come to Christ for salvation, for he lives forever to intercede forever, I mean, for every man. Once again, the truth shall set, uh, the truth sets man free to be saved to the uttermost. Uh, the scriptures, um, closing scriptures for tonight, uh, Hebrews 7 and 25, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them, Hebrews 7 and 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Uh, Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And lastly, Colossians 2, 9 through 10. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Amen. So we stand complete in our Savior, amen. Uh, uh, we are complete in him, amen. Everything we will ever have need of, not only anything that we have need of, but our eternal life has been paid for, bought for by our Savior Jesus Christ. And he has given us, as we read in John 10, 10, amen, that he has come to give us an abundant life, amen, a life to the fullest, amen. And that once again, that means a complete life. So we just not living or existing, amen, God took care of it all in the presence of his Savior, his son, Jesus, in, a, in his son, my Savior, Jesus Christ. So um, the last few classes that we've been talking about, amen, the truth sets man free from the shadow of despair. The truth sets man free from the bondage of sin. The truth sets man free of the bondage of death. The truth sets man free from the bondage of judgment and hell. And lastly, the truth sets man free to be saved to the uttermost. That means complete. Amen. We stand complete in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, next week, we're going to start a next portion, verse 10. And that is, we're going to be talking about the light. 
and how the light proves things. It shows what is acceptable. Um, what does this mean? As the believer um, walks in the light, he proves what is acceptable and not acceptable to the Lord. He discriminates between what is acceptable and not acceptable to the Lord. He shows to the world what is acceptable and not acceptable to the Lord. He shows what path to take and what path not to take. He shows what a person should do and not do as we pick up the lesson next week as the believers are to walk into light. Amen. So before we uh, put it in pastor's hands for closing remarks, um, do anybody would like to um, add any uh, input on tonight before we uh, go through the announcements and pastor's final remarks? Yes, Sister Ricky. Um, I just wanted to follow up on uh, Deacon Kevin's um, remarks about the foundation and the solid rock. In my devotions yesterday, and I had reread it earlier today, just saying this is exactly what we were talking about in Bible study, thanking God for being truth in the life, in, in my life and in the world, um, open our eyes so that we can seek and know the truth in our lives in the difficult moments that we would recognize his truth in the world and the continue to be the solid rock foundation which our lives are our lives are built on and in Matthew um, 7:24 therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them i will liken them unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and that um also, we, with your word and your true words as our unshakable faith, um, that all our hopes, dreams, ambitions, relationships will be built upon his truth and his love. And that um, the prayer was to ask, to point us in towards his truth and that we want to see less of ourselves and more of him each day. And the world is full of lies and how thankful we are for his truth. So Amen. there was a little bit more to it, but it just followed right along with the lesson. That's why I, I didn't say anything earlier because the more we talked about it, the more it just repeated this this yeah. whole um, lesson. And so I just thank God that he is the truth and the Holy Spirit is the truth. And yeah. that as long as we keep our eyes on him, we can walk in the truth. You know, if we start looking at the things of the world, the truth gets so distorted that you don't know what you're looking at. And um, I think I sent you that song earlier about how things that were right is now so wrong. And, but it's because none of it's focused on what the Lord says and his will and his way. It's just, things just are so skewed in our own reasoning and in our own minds that we are walking away from that firm foundation. If we just, um, quote, stay looking at Jesus, we'll stay on the right path. Amen. Amen. I thank you for sharing that, uh, Sister Ricky. And that is the, uh, the the whole gist of it. Amen. That we have to stay looking at Jesus. Amen. Uh, I think it's in Hebrews that mm -hmm. tells us, amen, that uh, to keep our eyes on the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. And that is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, and, you know, I, I have myself been and all the devotionals and all the different um, emails I get um, from other ministries have all been talking about the same thing. Truth. Amen. How yes. The truth is necessary and needed at this time and to pray. Amen. For our nation and for our country um, and for our churches. Amen. Uh, amen. Has switched from politics to more of the church. Let's pray for our churches mm -hmm. and pray for our pastors and leaders. Yes. Amen. Uh, Sister Stewart, uh, thank you, Sister Ricky. I saw Sister Stewart hand up. Yes, hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I just thank God for the lesson on today um, and the truth of his word. Um, one of the things I wanted to comment on earlier was when we, the earlier discussion was about, you know, we don't have the same accountability um, that we used to have in the church where there was actual, you know, good leadership. Um, like you say, we had a good foundation um, in our teaching. But I feel like that's a big missing part now. There's no repercussions from the leaders to a leader when they're stepping out of line. You know what I mean? That they're not mm -hmm. being held responsible. Um, 
The other thing I wanted to come in is we're speaking of overseers. One of the things you said, the devil repeats his mess over and over again. But, you know, God repeats his goodness over and over again. And, yeah. you know, he speaks in the Old Testament so much of, of everlasting life and for, you know, for evidence as we study his word. Um, and then it just moves into the New Testament. So it's right there that you will have eternity. And, you know, yeah. all the repercussions that are given. But like you say, man wants to, you know, um, live his own way. You know, mm -hmm. he wants to do what's right in his own eyes. But from Genesis to Revelation, God is speaking of eternity at all times. That his intention is for us to live forever with him. Yes. Yeah, and, you know, and the only way we can do it is by obeying his word, understanding the truth, and find <laughs> And finding good leadership, you know, because obviously it's not out there everywhere. Mm -hmm. Net leaders are speaking the truth. You have to really, you know, people have to, you know, we can study the word for ourselves, but you still kind of need guidance. You need yeah. leaders to, you know, break that word down for you. Um, you know, you have your commentaries because you can read something and misinterpret it with good intentions. Yes. And so you we need the true, <laughs> the true leaders who are studying the word, showing themselves approved as a workman should be. And just, you know, those were my comments for tonight. But yes, you know, eternity is for us. And we just have to obey his word. And the truth is from Genesis to Revelations, if we would accept it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Stewart. And that's true from Genesis to Revelation. It's all there for us. Amen. And it talks about eternity. And it talks about um, trusting our God, amen, and how to trust our God, how people trusted him in the Old Testament and how people trusted him in the New Testament, amen, and how he promised the Savior and the Savior did come in the presence of his son, Jesus Christ. It's all there in the word of God. And when people go against that word, amen, that's once again, that's their own interpretation. And this, and um, uh, as you was saying about leadership, um, no one, a lot of leaders, amen, don't have, amen, that authority figure, amen, to um, be accountable to. And I think as leaders, it's very important that you have someone that you're accountable to, because as you said, and as many of us know, that um, a leader can miss it too. And it's okay that they will have a leader that they can go to and, 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 and confide in them, and that leader can pour into them and help them in that situation, amen. So um, much prayer is needed for leadership. Um, especially during these times, because as, as stated, the, the enemy is trying to infiltrate the church and has infiltrated the church. And it came in subtly, and now it's um it's off, as they say, off to the races. Um, anyone yeah. else would like to um, say anything? Uh, yes, Dean. Thank you, Sister. Stewart. I just want to make a comment that uh, uh, next time you go to show a video, maybe I I can show it because there was no feedback the last two times I played. A video, yeah. So if that's something you might uh, want to do, I can probably play it. Okay. You know that like I was, that. I was going to send out video. those links. Yeah, I was going to send the links out, but if you could get them in, we can definitely start the lesson off next week with that. Yeah. Um, was that the one you that I showed earlier? Is that yes. The one you referred yes. To? yes. 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 We I don't know if I can share it while you are on, but you know you have to let me know that. Yeah. We well we'll test it before um next yeah. week. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Deacon Kevin. Uh, anyone else before we uh, put you in the hands of our pastor? Amen. Uh, at this time, um, turn it over to the pastor for closing remarks before we do announcements. Well, we just thank God for the lesson on tonight and for all the remarks that were made. And we thank God because, you know, we're just thinking about after death, the judgment, because we are justified and have been justified by faith. We do not have to face the wrath of God. Yes. We do not have to face. After death for us, we go straight to the beamer. Of course, there will be judgment as far as our works, mm -hmm. you know, our motives for working and why we work. Uh, but I just thank God for the lesson at large that we don't have to fear death. You know, we know that we don't have to, we're about the judgment that's going to come as a wrath because we have escaped yeah. that. Yes. And because we've accepted Jesus, you know, as our personal savior. 
So, yeah. I mean, I just thank God for each of you. I thank God for you and your faithfulness and for each one that's on uh, or at the Bible study on tonight. And we just want to, and I like the fact that, you know, we learned that we can be saved to the uttermost. And I yes. often say that God can save us from the gutter to the uttermost. Yes. <laughs> Yes. He can take a person that's, I mean, in the street, in the literal, literal gutter, and raise she or him up. Yes. And that's what he has to save to the uttermost. And mm. thank God for his redemptive plan of salvation for man. Our prayer is that God change the minds and hearts of people, that they will be able to receive the word yes. so they can make change. And and uh, I, was, I don't know who made the statement, but as they were making the statement, I was thinking about the fact that the Bible talks about that we are living epistles read of men. I think it was Dick and Anderson when he mentioned how that sinner, you know, was able to like speak against what he thought was wrong. Because even the world, we are living epistles. They know when we are right and they know when we're wrong. So yes. we have to live so we will not cause people to stumble. And that's the key, you know. So yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, uh, Pastor, uh, for those remarks. And I'll tell you, um these last weeks, I, I will say the last few years, um, the classes have been a blessing to me, has taught me a lot about how we are supposed to live as believers. And how God wants us to be true to his word, amen, and not be a part of the world. So um, it's encouragement, once again, to have leaders such as our pastor, overseer, and those in leadership within our church to be um, solid um, leaders that have uh, taught us, amen, the way of God, amen, and not the way of the world. Um, so, so important and so, so vital um, that we have good leadership. And I thank God for our leadership of re at Restoration. Um, at this time, I'm going to um, go over the, the uh, announcements for the week, and then we are going to really close out. Our announcements for this week are as follows. Um, on tomorrow morning, this time, a Restoration Radio broadcast at eight at uh, 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. on WTMR. What are you doing? Radio.com, uh, 800 a.m. radio, rcfchurch.org, and Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts. A pastor is still in a series on do not settle, don't settle for less, part two on tomorrow. Um, if you missed part one, which was an awesome um, class, um, please chime in for part two. Um, once again, 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. WTMRradio.com, 800 a.m. radio, rcfchurch.org, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. Uh, the new series, do, Don't Settle for Less, part two on tomorrow. Please, um, if you have opportunity, uh, please listen to that when you have a chance. Uh, this coming Saturday at 9 a.m. is the Men's Breakfast Fellowship uh, meeting. Um, this is a, a, a fellowship where men of all races come together. Uh, we will be getting back to um, doing breakfast. Amen. Um, but this uh, Saturday at 9 a.m. is at the church. At 9 a.m., men of all races will come together and we will fellowship hear the word of God, and just be encouraged by other men um, that are saved and unsaved. And we just thank God that through this uh, breakfast, men have been saved, men are still getting saved, homes are being set free, men are being set free. It's just a blessing. So if you're free at 9 a.m. this Saturday, uh, please come on through the church at 9 a.m. for our Men's Breakfast Fellowship. Uh, coming up on um, uh January 15th through 17th, we know we are be on a corporate fast. That's Monday through January 15th through Wednesday, January 17th. Uh, we believe in God for miracles and the power of God to fall fresh on our church. Um, whatever prayer, uh, prayer request you have for your personal family as well, uh, just please um, uh, understand that corporate prayer is important. And as we pray that week and believe God, um, for great things to happen at restoration and in your personal life, let's not forget that fast. Uh, corporate fast, Monday through uh, January 15th through Wednesday, January 17th. That's leading us into a revival service that we're having on Friday, January 19th. Um, that revival service um, is going to be uh, January 19th, 7 p.m. at the church. Uh, we have a guest um, speaker. That guest speaker is Bishop Tony Knight. 
uh, which is one of pastor's uh, students, overseer students. Um, and he comes to the men's fellowship as well. Uh, his church is Ch uh, Christ Community Church um, in Vineland, New Jersey. He will be here. Not only will he be coming, uh, but his he has a um, praise and worship team that will be taking over that praise and worship on that night. Um, matter of fact, one of the gentlemen came to the church today. I was told uh, to uh, see what instruments we had and what they would need because they really, really looking forward to this revival night. So we just want to um, believe God for great things to happen on that revival night. And as Pastor stated, uh, right now it's set for one night, but we don't know if God is ready to spark a revival that can go multiple nights. We don't know how God is going to move. But in our prayer and fasting next week um, on that week, we're going to believe God for great things to happen. Amen. Um, ways you can contact and give to Restoration. Uh, you can give to RCFC using our cash app or rcfchurch.org on our giving page. On our cash app, you can go dollar symbol RCF Church SJ, dollar symbol RCF Church SJ if you would like to plant a seed into this ministry. We thank God for that. Also, you can catch up with our videos on our Facebook and YouTube channels. Um, RCF Church SJ is our YouTube channel. RCF Church SJ is the YouTube channel. Our Facebook page is RCFC SJ, RCFC SJ. All of our meetings are posted on those websites. So if you wanted to catch up on anything, you can go to those uh, websites and catch up. Also on our website, rcfchurch.org, you can give to their, that page. You can also um, email us for any contact information or any information you would like to re uh, receive. And also you can um, listen to the radio broadcast. The messages messages from that is posted there as well. Um, and then lastly, if you would like to join us in person, uh, we're located at 403 Andrews Road, Sickleville, New Jersey, 08081. Uh, we are a church where everybody is somebody and you are loved with the love of the Lord. And we I uh, look forward to seeing you at the place. Amen. Not just online, but in person at um, Restoration Christian Fellowship Church. Amen. Uh, that's all of the announcements. At this time, um, I just thank God uh, for the class and announcements. And at this time, we're going to place in the hands of our senior pastor uh, for our closing prayer on tonight. Father God, I first ask for forgiveness for anything I might have done that would hinder this prayer or anything I might have done out of your will. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity that we have, that we can enter into the throne room, oh God, into the most holy of holies, to come in and to give you praise, to give you thanks, to obtain help and need in the time of trouble. Father, our world, our nation, the universe is in yes. trouble. Yes. And Lord, we need intercessors, Raise yeah. them up from the north, south, east, and west yeah. to be able to stand in the gap for nations. Hallelujah. Yes. God, we are praying for leaders of nations that you would continue to lead them and guide them. Leaders that their hearts need to be changed. God, God you said that the heart of the king can be changed by God. And yeah. we know that the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And Lord, we are standing, we are touching, we are agreeing. Where there is agreement, there is power. Yeah. God, we not only lift up leaders of nations, but we are praying, oh God, for our president, our yeah. world's condition. We are praying for the peace of Jerusalem. God, we are praying today for, for the body of Christ. Lord, those pastors and leaders that are compromising, Lord, bring conviction, oh God, into their hearts. To let them see that they're causing more people to fall than to be saved. So, Father God, we just thank you, oh God, for our local assembly, that you yes. will continue, oh God, to use us as a beacon in the community. Hallelujah. We are asking, yes. oh God, that as people walk past the premises, oh God, that they will be compelled and drawn in. God, we are, we are praying for the souls, Yes. From the north, the south, and east, and west, that you will send daughters and sons back home from the north, south, east, and west. Yes. Lord, those that Jesus. we don't even see in the name of Jesus, we're yes. going to start praying that even the more as we pray in church, 
that we welcome those that are in the invisible that we cannot see, but they're there in the spirit. And we will welcome them at restoration. God, we thank, thank you for our ministerial staff, our deacon board. God, every family, every member. God, we thank you for the daycare, the staff, the teachers, oh God. And Lord, we're asking today that you would touch, oh God, and raise up those that are in the dunghill. Lord, raise them, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We are praying for the Lord of the harvest, that you would raise up laborers. For the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Yeah. And Lord, we are asking, oh God, we're coming against the spirit of suicide, the spirit of abortion. Yes. Oh, God, the spirit of loneliness, God. We are asking, oh, God, we're coming against sex trafficking. Yes, women and boys and girls that are being abused, oh, God. Lord, we're asking that you make a way of an escape for them in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, as we go forth, oh, God, in our daily chores and with our daily uh, things that we have to do, let us be conscious always of your presence, yes. that you're always there. You're with us. You yeah. promise never to leave us. Lord, I ask, oh God, we're lifting up Dick and Tall, his brother James Tall, yeah. God. We're lifting up Kimberly, Lord. We're lifting up others that are on our prayer list, oh God, that you were set free. We thank you for touching Lou's body, Lord, yes. and, and, and giving him strength, oh God, to be a part of the service. We are praying for Francis's son, even yes. more, we're sending forth your word to deliver, to set free, to make whole oh God. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, yes. we know that nothing too hard for you in the name of, name Jesus. of Jesus. And yes. Lord, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We pray, oh God, yes. that your will be done, your kingdom come, oh God, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us our heart's desires. Lord, you know our heart's cry. Oh, God, for each one that's on the line or on this, <laughs> at this Bible study, God, you know, our yeah. hearts cry desires. We are praying for our children, our yeah. children's children, our children's children's children, God. Yes, oh, yes. God, we're praying and we're decreeing that none of them will die and go to them. Lord, we are praying for marriages and relationships, oh, God. In yes, the name, the name of Jesus. Jesus. Make known your wonders everywhere. God, yeah. we trust you. We're loving you. We're believing in you. And God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let God's people say amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor, for those uh, that prayer. Uh, once again, we thank everybody for joining. Please have a great night. Uh, the Lord says in his word, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please Amen. be blessed. We look forward to seeing you at our next Sunday service or Wednesday night Bible study. Be blessed and take care. God bless. Amen. Good night.